everyone. So today we're going to be talking about shiitake grow kits. Now, as I said in the previous video, um, shiitake grow kits act completely differently than any of our other grow kits. Uh, they require a different setup. So I'll be walking you through that today, as well as some issues you might have with your uh, shiitake grow kit and how to solve them. So first off, this is our block for the shiitake. Now, first things off, you'll notice it looks completely different. It is entirely, almost entirely brown, with a little bit of white here and there, and it has all these bumps on it. Now, all of those bumps are where a mushroom is going to grow. So you can tell just how many are going to grow right there. Now, similar to your other grow kits, it's going to come in a box, but this one won't have a front label have shiitake written on it. It will still have our contact information so you can get a hold of us and inside it will have a humidity, humidity tent like the other one with it being sealed on the top and the holes in it. Your little spray bottle and it'll have a modified do's and don'ts. So any of these do's that are crossed out, don't follow those, they require some different care. And you should also have a printout of the shiitake instructions. I will have those later. So, let's get into it. This is our shiitake block. Now, when you get your block, you're not going to be cutting it in X marks like you did the other ones. You're going to be completely taking off the plastic. So we're going to take off the plastic, let all the fluid inside drain out. So I recommend uh, you do this over a sink or a bathtub because it gets messy. Now these blocks do have a smell to them. When people open them up at first they are shocked that they are kind of sticky, but the fact that this is essentially wood pellets being fermented in a block for over two months. That's going to smell. Um, so that's normal. It's supposed to smell like that. So I'm going to cut my block over this tray here to contain the mess and we're going to see what comes out. So I'm just using an X-Acto knife here. I'm just going to cut along the top, like so. Now it doesn't really matter. You don't need the bag anymore. And if you're someone who gets squeamish with this stuff, I recommend you put on gloves. If you have plastic gloves, those are good. Any rubber gloves gonna get a little messy. Okay, now this block has some mold on it, which is fine. Shiitake blocks are prone to mold just because they're kept in the bag for a lot longer than our other blocks, so they do sometimes get some mold on there. Mushrooms are fungi and they're kept in the exact same growing environments that mold thrives in, so that's very normal. is very normal and not very harmful, um, but when handling it, it's good to have a mask on. So I'm using a KN95 with a filter on it. You don't always need to have a filter, um, but they're very good. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on gracefully. Okay, make sure it's flush. At this point, we all know how to wear a mask. Okay. Now, here is our block. 
It looks strange. Now I'm going to do this on my box here to save my table. And just so you guys can see everything. So here's our block. And you can see all these little knobs. That's where all the mushrooms are going to grow. And we actually have some mushrooms starting up on top here. So you can see that. And that's our mold there. I'm going to show you how to deal with that mold. Now for this next step, it's very, very important that you wear your mask because you don't want to inhale. Now, a little warning, make sure you're handling this safely and an adult is present. Maybe the adult should handle this. Now, I'm using a little blowtorch used for like creme brulee, a lot of cooking, um, and often used uh, when lighting fires and stuff like that. You can also just use a little barbecue lighter, that's fine, but this is far more effective. So you're just going to burn the mold itself. Burning the mold off will kill it, but leave the rest of the block unharmed. And it shouldn't catch fire. Uh, the block itself is damp enough that it should contain. So I'm going to go ahead and show. Now, you're just singeing it. You're not trying to burn it down. You're not trying to get it to like a charcoal. You're just burning the surface mold. If you burn too much of it, uh, you will be killing the, any possible mushroom underneath. You need to be careful. So you can see there. The mold has been burnt off, but I'm not causing the block any harm. And again, very important, you're not breathing this in. up of the block that's what it looks like after you burn uh, any mold you see so you'll still be able to see the mold um, it'll just look really burnt and that's the block itself so that is what a normal shiitake block should look like and you might even have some starting mushrooms grow on top so now we're going to if you want to boost your growth for your shiitake grow kit you're going to uh, cold shock it. So you can do this in a fridge or anywhere really cold, but not freezing. So if you have a cold room in your house or in a garage, but just as long as it doesn't hit freezing, you don't want to kill your block. So the cold shock will kickstart the growth for the kit and it will boost the mushrooms. And then you should start to get mushrooms at all these little nubs. Then you're gonna take your humidity tent. And again, you're gonna spray into your tent around 20 
times, uh, just enough to leave it damp, but not like pooling. You don't want it dripping wet. And then you're gonna put that over top. And then your mushrooms will grow inside. So you're gonna repeat that process uh, around three to five times every day. You're gonna spray into the humidity tent to keep it humid. And you should start to see mushrooms fairly soon. You're gonna harvest the mushrooms by cutting them right at the base. So here's a small one. You're gonna cut right at the base of the mushroom just before the block with scissors. So that way you leave the, the part that's actually attached to the block without harming the block itself. You get a cleaner cut. So you're gonna do that for every mushroom. And then once you think your block is done, you're gonna soak it. So uh, in a large tub or something, or in a sink, you can soak your block overnight. So it rehydrates, takes in all the water, and after that, you're gonna cold shock it again. So in a fridge, garage, anywhere that doesn't hit freezing, you're gonna cold shock it, and you should see another round. You should get maybe one or two more rounds of harvest. So whenever you think a harvest is done, you can rehydrate it and cold shock it, and you should get another harvest. Now, every time you do this process, you will get less and less, so eventually it will peter down to nothing, but it's a very renewable process. Okay, I hope that answered any possible questions. Um, again, leave a comment in the comment section or send us an email if you have any more questions. I'll try and answer as many as I possibly can, and uh, happy growing!